Hey kids, today is our sixth story from our colonial towns listening and learning. Our last story talked about different tradespeople who made garments for the customers who came to their shops in town during colonial times. Today you're going to hear a fictional or made up story about a shoemaker or cobbler. After the story you will be able to describe the different kinds of tradespeople in a colonial town and describe the characters and setting in the story. Let's go over our vocabulary first. Our vocabulary word of the day is thrilled. Thrilled means to be extremely happy. For example, Jacob was thrilled when his best friend came to play. This story, called The Elves and the Shoemaker, is about a once successful shoemaker who had become poor. Let's listen carefully to find out how he once again became successful and who helped him. Let's begin. Once there was a shoemaker who had grown very poor over the course of several years. He didn't have much money. The shoemaker had been very good at his trade. He made attractive or good-looking shoes that fit well and made his customers happy. But unfortunately, fashions have changed over time and the shoemaker's shoes had gone out of style. People didn't want to buy them anymore. They preferred the shoes that the shoemaker in the next town made. The shoemaker looked around at his shop, which was in the front of his house. He had very few supplies left to make new shoes. What supplies or materials does he need to make a pair of shoes? Since people had stopped buying his shoes, he wasn't making any money. Because he wasn't making any money, he wasn't able to buy new supplies. He picked up the tiny bit of leather that he had left. He thought perhaps he would be able to squeak one last pair of shoes before he closed his shop for good and moved to the poorhouse with his wife. He carefully cut out the pieces he needed and set them on his work table. But he was too tired to work, so he yawned, kissed his wife goodnight, and went to bed. What do you think will happen to the poor shoemaker? And the next morning, he rubbed his eyes, kissed his wife good morning, and went directly to his shop to work on that last pair of shoes. When he entered his shop, he stopped short. He rubbed his eyes again. There, on his work table, where he'd left the pieces of shoe leather the night before, was a per perfectly assembled pair of shoes. Wow, where do you think the finished shoes came from? The shoemaker picked up a shoe. The stitching was neat and attractive. The shoe was more stylish and interesting than the shoes the shoemaker himself made. But where on earth had the shoes come from? Who had made them? The shoemaker had no idea. The shoemaker asked his wife, but she also had no idea. Not knowing what else to do, the shoemaker picked up the shoes and placed them in his front window. Just then, a gentleman walked by. He stopped at the window and peered in. He quickly opened the door and pointed to the new shoes. I simply must have those shoes. What will you take for them? The shoemaker shrugged and gave his normal price. The man waved his arms excitedly. No, 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 no. Those shoes are worth twice that much. He insisted that the shoemaker take double his normal price for the new shoes. The shoemaker accepted the money graciously, or with thanks. As soon as the man walked out of the shop, the shoemaker clicked his heels kissed his wife, and ran out the door to go to the leather shop. With the money he'd just been paid, he was able to buy enough leather for two new pairs of shoes. Later that day, the shoemaker cut out the pieces to make two new pairs of shoes. But he was tired, so he yawned, kissed his wife goodnight, and went to bed. In the morning, the shoemaker found two new pairs of shoes, just like the pair he had found the day before. The stitching on both pairs was just as neat and attractive as the stitching on the previous pair, and the style was just as interesting. He put the two new pairs in the front window and was pleased when two men walked in within minutes and offered double the normal price for the two pairs of shoes. The shoemaker again clicked his heels, kissed his wife, and ran out to the leather shop. He bought enough leather to make four new pairs of shoes. Again, he cut out the leather and went to bed. What do you think will happen now? Mm, those are some great predictions. And in the morning, he found four new pairs of shoes. 
Were your predictions correct? I think they were. Again, the shoes sold quickly for double the shoemaker's normal price. And again, the shoemaker clicked his heels, kissed his wife, and ran to the leather shop to buy more leather. This went on and on and on until the shoemaker had sold so many pairs of shoes that he became a very rich man. Now he had a lot of money. One evening, just as he was about to kiss his wife goodnight, he suggested to her that they stay up and find out who was responsible for making all these shoes that had made them so rich. His wife thought that was a good idea, so the two of them hid in a dark corner of the shop and struggled to stay awake. What or who do you predict they'll see? At about midnight, they saw two little elves enter the shop. Elves are small magical characters or fairies. The elves were wearing old, worn-out clothes with holes in the elbows and knees. They went straight to the leather and began to work, stitching together shoe after shoe after shoe. When they were done, they lined the shoes up neatly into pairs and then quietly left the shop. Is this what you predicted? The shoemaker and his wife were very surprised. Who would have imagined that two little elves can make such stylish shoes, the shoemaker said. Yes, said the wife, and yet they have no shoes of their own, nor do they have decent clothes. I would like to make them each a new set of clothes. It is the least we can do for all they have done for us. That is a nice idea, said the shoemaker. So the shoemaker's wife worked all day. She made two little shirts and two little pairs of trousers or pants. She made two little pairs of suspenders and two little pairs of socks and two little pairs of shoes. The little shoes looked exactly like little versions of the stylish shoes the elves made themselves. That night, the shoemaker and his wife laid out the new sets of clothes in the place where they usually set out the shoe leather. They hid in the corner to watch how little, how their little elf friends would react when they saw their presence. How do you think the elves will react? I think they're going to be really, really excited. At midnight, the two elves entered the shop. They saw their new clothes and looked thrilled to pieces. They quickly put everything on. Then they danced together. We are two fine or fancy little gentleman now said one elf yes we are said the other we are so fine that we can never think of working as shoemakers ever again they joined arms and skipped out of the shoemaker shop the shoemaker and his wife never saw the elves again but by this time they had grown very rich and never had to make shoes again and so they lived happily ever after the end Let's have a discussion about this great story. Who are the main characters in the story? What is the setting of the story? Setting is where the story takes place. What material does the shoemaker use to make his shoes? Why had the once successful shoemaker become poor? What does the shoemaker's wife do for the elves? Have these discussions with your families.